All right, so today we have ourselves the start of a new journey with a new ECU for the Mark II GTI. So we're moving over to a Speedwino ECU, which is a uh, Adreno powered um, engine ECU, which has a lot of functionalities and has almost all the engine functionalities that uh, Mega Squirt has. One of the initial challenges is going to be the, the map sensor. So what actually struck me to do this is the fact that if you search for a uh, map sensor, you're faced with this problem. This is a Link 3 bar map sensor and it's 106 US dollars, which is not cheap. So this, this um, map sensor I'm using is a uh, Toyota replacement and it was 340 Namibian dollars which is like 30 US dollars I mean a little bit more than 30 US dollars which is worth justifying and experimenting with so let's test this out and see the results so today I bought this map sensor it's for a Toyota 1KD uh, 3D diesel it's a common sensor in in our area in my area that I live in and it is fairly inexpensive so I'm gonna use this for my turbo uh, for manifold absolute pressure which is a map sensor and um, I just wired it up I connected the, the ECU I connected the ECU right here to the to the laptop via the wire this is basically the ECU setup with all its pinouts so I connected the, the ECU the pinout for the map sensor I found online and I'm not actually sure if it's the correct one but it worked so I just assumed most Toyotas would be the same as Toyotas usually do. Toyotas do usually reuse parts so in this case I just uh, searched up for one JZ map sensor pinout and I found this and that is actually the map sensor this is the map sensor so from the map sensor it needs a 5 volt on the left furthermost left pin middle is the map signal and on the right is the ground so all of that comes from the ECU all, of them, all three of those wires connect to the ECU so it has stable ground stable 5 volts and it has the signal which obviously needs to left which obviously needs to go to the ECU so this is the three wires I couldn't find a connector so I just uh, deepened the connector and uh, yeah have a temporary connector right there probably have to order some connectors online and uh, go from there on but right now I have that set up so that I can use the the map sensor so this map sensor didn't come with a uh, map scaling a map uh, output graph as a proper aftermarket map sensor would have so ideally you would have a, one of these this is a 3 bar Bosch map sensor same same uh, three pins not in the exact same order but this is what you want you want this graph you want the the, the pressure versus the voltage and that would that's what you would input into your ECU and since I don't have that for my specific map sensor, I had to be a little bit creative. I looked up the part number, I actually confirmed with the part shop what the part number was, and this is what I got online. The, the, according to the part number, this range of uh, pressures and voltages. So uh, using those pressures and voltages for my specific map sensor, I was able to deduce the the required um, voltages uh, that the Tuner Studio that the ECU actually needs. When I go to calibrate the map sensor, go to tools, calibrate pressure sensors, it actually asks me for the KPA at 0 volts and the KPA at 5 volts. So since I don't have that, I only have the KPA at, since I don't have that, I only have the the voltage according to that table I just showed you I only have the voltage at uh, 10 kPa 
and at 270 kPa. That's all I have from that table. So I have the voltage at that point, which is the 950 50 something, and I have the 470 at uh, 270 kPa. So using that, so one of the important things is that uh, all the map sensors have a linear relationship with the voltage and the pressure input. So you can actually draw your own graph only using two points. So what I add, what I do is, you know that the relationship between a on a straight line between the y-axis and the x-axis is y is equal to mx plus c, where c is your your intercept. So I just worked out my m, your your gradient, which is the seven um, four seventy minus nine fifty six divided by two seventy point five minus ten. 270.3 actually, 270.3 minus 10 and the gradient was 14.57 so I found out the gradient and then I used this existing point to find out the y-intercept the c because I want this equation to be complete with only y and x so I want to eliminate c and x and find their actual values so at the specific point at 956 I could find that I know that uh, the pressure is 10 kPa and I know that the gradient, which I just calculated, is 14.574. So the only unknown would be C. So making C the subject, I found that that is was 810.47. So yeah. So this is actually very useful if you don't have a uh, aftermarket printout or you have any map sensor that you want to use. You can use this look up your part number and according to that I actually now know what the equation for this whole line is so I can find the voltages in this case it wants the kPa at 0 volts so I can find the kPa at 0 volts for this specific map sensor so I just plug in the the uh, 0 which is the voltage which is on the y-axis so 0 is equal to 14.57 the m that's the m the gradient x is what you want to know x is the kPa and we know that uh, the that c was 810 so finding x we found as negative 55.56 so that's what I input into the uh, the, the tuner studio so for the at 0 volts it is negative 56 kPa so another thing I have to tell you is that um, most map sensors I mean actually every map sensor does not actually read from 0 to 5 volts so it, you actually have to make that deduction to find the range of the values so most value so most map sensors actually only read from like in this case uh, 0 0.9 volts to 4.7 volts so you can't actually uh, find this any other way except by using this mathematical equations so for the 5 volts reading I did the same thing I know that it at 5 volts is 5000 I suppose we have extra zero there it's supposed to be 5000 um, 5000 volts 5000 millivolts and then I found X in this equation and then I found X in this equation equation which was 2000, I mean 287.57. So I input that into my, into my tuner studio, into the tune of the car. So ultimately I found the zero and the five volt KPA rating for the specific sensor based on its part number. So now that I have that, I looked up the air pressure in my, in my city according to two of these weather um, world weather online so the current pressure is 1018 milli, millibars right here and according to this it's 1025 millibars so on my output for my on my output here over here for my output on my map sensor it should be 100 and 100 point 25 kPa 
and over here you can see it's 102 kPa right in, right now so this actually confirms that my uh, that my values are accurate because it's showing the actual pressure showing the absolute pressure right now where I'm sitting which is 102 so the next part is just another way to confirm that the voltages that you input into your ECU are actually correct and that your ECU is actually uh, properly calibrated so I just use a, a compressor and a multimeter and in this part I have to just tell you this that so you don't blow up your boost gauge like I did use the pressure regulator on your compressor to set your pressure far below the tank pressure so you need less than one bar obviously because you probably won't boost more than one bar so if you go more than one one or two bars your gauge will probably overextend and you'll damage your boost gauge if you're intending on using it so set your pressure regulator low enough similar to your car's boost pressures so that you don't accidentally destroy your boost gauge so I'm going to take a voltage reading and I'm going to record the map and based on that I'm going to plug in those values into my linear equation and see if I actually got the right values in terms of voltage according to my pressure. Alright so I hope you enjoyed that video and if you found it helpful please feel free to like and subscribe.